Hi students, today we are going to do a topic from number theory, arithmetic functions. Here we will be studying two arithmetic functions, the Euler's function and the Mobius function. Let's start by defining what are arithmetic functions. So functions whose domain are set of integers are called arithmetic functions. Let us start with the Euler's function. Euler's function is denoted by phi of n. Now, what is phi of n? Phi of n is nothing but the number of positive integers in a reduced residue system mod of n. Or in other words, phi n gives us the number of positive integers not exceeding n that are relatively prime to n. It is also called the Euler's totient function. Let's look at some examples. What if we are asked to find the value of phi of 7? We can see here n is 7. So we have to find the number of elements in the reduced residue system mod of 7. If we write the reduced residue system mod 7, we know it will have the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 elements. So, phi of 7 is equal to 6. What if we are asked to find phi of 9? If we write the reduced residue system mod of 9, it will be 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8. Again, we get 6 elements in this reduced residue system. So, phi of 9 is 6. We can check the number of positive integers which do not exceed 9 and which are relatively prime to 9 are only these numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8. So, phi of 9 is 6. Now, does that mean that every time we are asked to find the phi value, we are supposed to write the reduced residue system and then count the number of elements? Not necessarily. We have some wonderful formulas to do so. Let's look at those formulas. These are 3 in number and they depend on the type of number we have. So we would basically have 3 types of numbers. First, what if my n is prime or our n is a prime power or n is a product of prime powers. So for all these 3 different cases, we have 3 formulas. Let's start. If n is a prime, let's say p, then phi of p is always found using p is equal to p minus 1. If n is a prime power, then phi of n is p to the power n minus p to the power n minus 1. And lastly, if n is a product of prime powers, then if we take phi on both the sides, we will get phi of n is equal to phi of this whole product. Phi is a multiplicative function. So, phi will operate on each prime power. And this will give us phi p1 to the power alpha 1, phi p2 to the power alpha 2, multiplied dash dash dash, phi pr to the power alpha r. Now, we apply the second formula to each term and this is what we will get. We just mentioned phi n is a multiplicative function. So, what are multiplicative functions. Any function is a multiplicative function if given two integers m and n such that they are relatively prime, then if phi of m n is equal to phi of m into phi of n, we say it is a multiplicative function. We will do some examples here. Let us say we are asked to find phi of 3, phi of 8 and phi of 24 using the formulas. How do we find them? To find phi of 3, we'll use the first formula as 3 is a prime. So phi of 3 will become 3 minus 1 which is 2. To find phi of 8, we'll first write 8 as a power of prime number. 8 can be written as 2 to the power 3. So phi of this is 2 to the power 3 minus 2 square, which gives us 4. To find 
pi of 24, first 24 has to be written as a product of primes. So 24 becomes 2 to the power 3 into 3. And as phi is multiplicative function, it will be phi of 2 to the power 3 into phi of 3. And this gives us phi 2 to the power 3 is 4, phi 3 is equal to 2, so the answer is 8. What if we have asked to find phi of 325? The first thing we'll do is we'll write 3 to 5 as a product of prime powers. It is 5 squared into 13. When we use phi on both the sides, we will get phi of 3 to 5 is phi of 5 squared into phi of 13. We apply the second formula, we get 5 square minus 5 and this is nothing but 12. So the answer is 240. Two things we have to always remember. First, that phi n is always an even integer except when n is 1 or n is 2. We will see phi of 1 is always 1 and phi of 2 is also 1. So, leaving these two numbers, all other phi values will always be even. Second point which we have to remember is that for different n values, we can have the same phi n values. There are some very good theorems on phi. Let's see. The first theorem states that if we take all the divisors of the given integer n and find the phi values and add them, summation of phi d will always be equal to the number n itself. What if we take n to be 6? We know that the divisors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. If we find the phi values for each of these and add, we will get phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3 plus phi 6. This is 1, this is 1, phi of 3 is 2 and phi of 6 is also 2 because phi of 6 would be phi of 2 into phi of 3. Phi of 2 is 1, phi of 3 will be 2. So this whole thing adds to 6 which is equal to our n. Let's define the Mobius function mu of n. The Mobius function is defined as it will have only three values. Either it will have 1 or it will have 0 or it will have minus 1. Now, phi of n is 1 if and only if n is 1. Phi of n will be 0 if and only if the n is divisible by some square of prime. And it will be minus 1 to the power r if a n is nothing but the product of distinct primes. So, here we see that we have r distinct primes. So, we have mu of n is minus 1 to the power r. Mu of n is also a multiplicative function, which means if GCD of two integers m and n is 1, then if mu of m n is equal to mu n, mu m into mu n, we say mu is a multiplicative function. Here in this table, we have found the phi and mu values for all values of n from 1 to 10. Some of the values which we used earlier in examples, we can see here also. Let's start with n is equal to 1. Phi of 1 will always be 1. Phi of uh, mu of 1 will always be 1, as we know from the definition. Phi of 2 will also be 1 and phi and mu of 2 will be minus 1 because 2 is a single prime. So, r is 1. Same is the case with 3. As 3 is a single prime, mu of 3 is minus 1 and phi of 3 is 2. Here you can see that n is 4 and as 4 is divisible by 2 square, mu of 4 is 0. But phi of 4 is 2, which we can use the formula and find. Come to 8. 8 is also divisible by 2 squared, so mu of 8 is 0. As we had seen earlier, mu of 9 is also 0 because 9 is divisible by 3 squared. And 
mu of 10 is 1 because 10 can be written as 2 into 5 and mu of 10 will be mu into 2, mu of 2 into mu of 5 which is 1. Let's look at some examples. If we are asked to find mu of 19 and mu of 20, mu of 19 will be minus 1 as this is a single prime. Mu of 20. So first we write 20 as product of prime powers. 20 will be 2 square into 5. If we take mu of 20, we'll get mu of 2 square into mu of 5. Because mu of 2 square is 0. As 2 square is divisible by 2 square, the whole value is 0. How about mu of 3 to 5? First we write 3 to 5 as 5 square into 13. Mu of 3 to 5 will be mu of 5 square into mu of 13. Mu of 13 is minus 1. But mu of 5 square is 0 because 5 square is divisible by 5 square. A square of prime number. So this whole value becomes 0. Let's look at some theorems which relate phi and mu. So in this theorem we can see that phi of n is nothing but summation of mu of d multiplied by n by d where d's are nothing but the divisors of the given integer n and this is equal to n product of all the factors 1 minus 1 by p where p are the prime which divide n. Another theorem states 1 plus 5p plus 5p square going up to 5 of p to the power n is always p to the power n. That is, if we are given some prime integer p and we find all the 5 values and add 1 to that, it will be equal to p to the power n. We can see the proof here. It is 1. For 5p, we get p minus 1. For 5p square, we have p square minus p. 5 p cube, we get p cube minus p square. And if we open the brackets, we see that terms will cancel. 1 will cancel with this one. This p will cancel with this p. And in the end, we will be left with only one term, which is p to the power n. Another useful theorem is, if we find the mu value for all the divisors of n and add them up, it will give us a 0. We will next do a very important theorem of number theory, the Euler's theorem. And we'll give a proof of that. Euler's theorem states that if GCD of any two integers a and m is 1, then a to the power phi m is always congruent to 1 mod of m. Let's prove this. We'll start with a reduced residue system mod of m. Let R1, R2, R5 m be a reduced residue system mod of m. Then A, R1, A, R2, A, R5 m, all these will also form a reduced residue system. Reason is, we had a reduced residue system and all we did was multiply each residue with an integer a. So that also forms a reduced residue system, mod of m. And they will be congruent. So we write it as a r1 into a r2. We multiply all of them. And this gives us congruence to r1 into r2 into r of phi m mod of m. Now there are phi m a's on the left hand side. So we pull them out and we write it as a to the power phi m into r1 into r2 dash 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 r phi m congruent to r1 into r2 dash 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 r phi m mod of m as all of these were r1 r2 dash dash r phi m they were relatively prime to m the product will also be relatively prime to m so using the cancellation law we can cancel the product and we will be left with a to the power phi m is congruent to 1 mod of m. Now we studied the Euler's and Mobius function. 
we would be curious to know what are the applications of Euler's and Morbus, Mobius function or how are they used? So let's look at some applications. Euler's function phi n is used in cryptography in RSA technique for generating the public and the private key. How does it work? So we start with an integer n and that n is nothing but a product of two primes. Let's say that the primes are p and q. So n is equal to p into q. Next we find the phi of n. As they were prime, phi of n will be p minus 1 into q minus 1. We find that. And then we will take an integer k such that its GCD with phi of n is 1. And k value lies between 1 and phi n. The pair n k forms the public key. We will then find e the inverse of k mod of phi n. And the pair n e forms the private key. So it plays a very important role in cryptography. Let's look at another application. Phi n also helps us in reducing big numbers to their residues. And now this makes easy for us to find last few digits of any integer raised to a big power. Here we use Euler's theorem. As you have already seen, Euler's theorem uses phi of n. Let's say we are asked to find the last two digits of 3 to the power 3, 2, 4. It means we have to find an x such that 3 to the power 3, 2, 4 is congruent to x mod of 100. As GCD of 3 and 100 is 1, Euler's theorem can be used. This gives us 3 to the power 500 is congruent to 1 mod of 100. Phi of 100 is 40. This implies 3 to the power 40 is congruent to 1 mod 100. Now, this is something which we will use to find the last two digits. We were given 3 to the power 3 to 4. Now, if we divide 324 by 40, we'll get 40 into 8 plus 4. So, we write 3 to the power 3 to 4 as 3 to the power 40 raised to the power 8 multiplied by 3 to the power 4. As 3 to the power 40 was congruent to 1, we get this whole thing is congruent to 1 into 81 and the last two digits are 81. Another application of phi n is in finding remainder when some integer is raised to a power and it is divided by some other integer. As an example, let's say we have to find the remainder when 2 to the power 123 is div divided by 17. It means we have to find x such that 2 to the power 123 is congruent to x mod of 17. As GCD of 2 and 17 is 1, again we can use Euler's theorem. Euler's theorem gives us 2 to the power phi 17 is congruent to 1 mod 17. Phi of 17 is 16. Now this gives us 2 to the power 16 is congruent to 1 mod 17. We come back to our question which was find the remainder when 2 to the power 123 is divided by 17. So 2 to the power 123 can be written as 2 to the power 16 raised to the power 7 multiplied by 2 to the power 11. If we add all these powers 16 into 7 plus 11, we will get 123. 2 to the power 16 was congruent to 1. So we are left with 2 to the power 11, which is congruent to 1 mod of 17. Hence, the remainder is 1. Phi of n is also used in primality testing, which means in finding whether a number given integer is prime or not. And mu of n is used in inverting certain number theoretic functions. Thank you for watching.